Hello, welcome to my van. This content is sponsored by Outdoorsy. Through Outdoorsy, you can rent your camper van out to make extra cash, and you can rent a van to try van life before you commit. I've had quite a lot of response on various websites and Facebook pages and all this sort of stuff, so I thought I'd do a tour um, to show you around my wagon. Um, there's quite a lot of features that you might find useful um for your own van build the parquet floor was a real real labor of love because um you don't realize it but this stuff gets ripped up um from various housing projects and whatever and it's got bitumen on the underside which is like tar before you put it down you have to chisel it all off by hand so i ended up chiseling about eight square meters of uh, parquet floor only to use about half of that and it took me about a week so yeah probably the longest most monotonous boring job was the floor i've got a fridge it's a 45 liter russell hobbs it uh, just runs off the inverter i haven't bothered with the 12 volts 12 volt fridge because um i thought originally that the 300 watt panel that i've got on the roof would be enough especially with my two 110 amp hour batteries and also the um, split relay charger. But unfortunately, I didn't bank on the short days and gray skies and all the rest of it. So generally it's cold enough that I don't even use the fridge. Um, also, after living in the last van, which was a um, ex ambulance, I really wanted to like up the level of luxury and I got myself an oven. Um, this is probably the single most expensive item in the van. Um, it cost us about 250 quid and it just runs off a gas line. It just got so boring frying things and eating really oily, unhealthy foods. So I really, really wanted an oven. So like pizza on the road becomes possible. Yesterday's dinner can also be stored in there for your <laughs> lunch the next day. The soundbar, when I'm watching movies, when I'm lying in the back, I'll show you my little setup back there in a sec. But um, when I'm watching movies in there or if I'm listening to music while I'm cooking or podcasts, whatever, and it's it's belter. It's absolute, an absolute blast. So sound quality is a must have for me. So yeah, essential. These things, as a space saver, whether it's a big van or a small van, are amazing. Having all of this dried food up here means that it's not in your cupboards. You know what you've got, you know when to top up. And the main thing, the main thing, the main reason why I wanted it here is just because it looks good. But these um, are attached with Sikaflex on the top of the lid. And then from the underside, I've gone up with a screw inside because some of them are getting up close and personal with the pickle there. Some of them are pretty, um, yeah, dangerous. So if that was to drop off and smash, I don't really want all of my sh to be stained purple and smelling of cabbage. So yeah, there you go. Feel free to take that one. Right, welcome to the back end, the action end, the chill zone, the space of relaxation, whatever you want to call it. The main thing with this van when I bought it was getting the extra height but uh, I didn't know why I wanted the extra height. So I was trying to figure out where I wanted to go with it. And so I landed on the idea of having a bed that winches down. So without further ado, I'll show you this. It does get quite tiring and a bit repetitive. So I think I'll probably get a drill and I'll just go and it'll lower it down. So that'll be the next tech upgrade. You might want to get a cup of tea. So the bed sits on those two steel beams um, and they can be folded away and put into the storage under there, uh, the seating area, or like I do, I just stash them down the back. But this is super handy to be able to just drop this down and have my bed ready. And also that can turn into another bed so from underneath it is a bit of a squeeze but i have got bunk beds that mean that when i've got guests they can sleep in the coffin the winch system i've used is actually a garage storage device that's made by a swedish company called fuel 
Um, and I've just modified it basically so that it works in here. And it took a few days to suss out where to put all of the individual um, wheels or whatever. But um, all of it came as a kit. You get the four wheels, you get this, you get the winch handle. And it cost us about 100 quid. Um, but yeah, the main thing is figuring out where to position it <clears throat> so that you've got enough strength for it to hold the bed up. It can take 100 kilos of weight, um, but to be honest, I don't really want to risk getting up on that while it's suspended from the ceiling. So yeah, anyway, here we go, we'll put this away. This, again, was another real labour of love. Um, you wouldn't think so when you look at it, but to get all of these individual holes, I had to go along with a punch, hammer, hammer one hole in as a pilot, move along, bam, 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 all the way along, and then a small metal bit, drill all the way through, and then come back with the large one, bam, 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 all the way along. And then to thread the lights into here was an absolute nightmare. I went from like using a, a like plumb bob on the end of a string to try and hook it and pull it through. I ended up trying, like eventually I used a screwdriver to push the lights through one by one right the way up. Um, but yeah, like, it doesn't give off as much light as I would like, but when it's dark, combined with the LED lights on this side, the lightning here is actually really cozy. And in the winter, I think that's probably a good bonus. Yeah, these little alcoves are super handy because when the bed's down, it means that I can just leave my phone charging on here, like I can plug it in here, or I can run my phone cable from this switchboard. It's got USB. It's got USB, uh, super fast and not super fast. Um, and it's also got a cigarette lighter, so if you want to charge anything, just bam, straight on the windowsill. I've also got some candles, which um, I learned the hard way is probably not the best idea when, you, um, when you've got it in an in enclosed space where it's all surrounded by wood because I don't know if you can see it, but there's um, some pretty severe soup marks that go up there. A real genius moment, a little bit of an epiphany that I had um, was with the shower room. Again, after living in the last van and only being able to wash in streams, lakes, rivers, um, puddles, whatever, um, I just thought if I'm going to be living in here long term, I want to be able to have uh, hot water and a shower. So in here, you're going to have to try and like loop it over behind my baked beans tin. Yeah. This is my, um, my hot water, instant hot water heater. But that gives me hot water <clears throat> for when I'm washing the dishes. But then <clears throat> also it comes around into the bathroom which is an unfinished zone as of yet. But um, the shower is an exposed copper pipe shower and it just turns on using these. I prime it with the pump over here. Bam. And then, I don't, I don't know. Yet. Oh, shit. Yeah, you get the idea. <laughs> unfinished. So I ran some ducting from my diesel heater, which is located under here which is the brains of the organization, my two leisure batteries, the inverter and the heater. But yeah, th when the heater is turned on, there's three outlets here for the living space. And I've put the other into the bottom of the wall in the bathroom, <clears throat> which means I can use this room as a drying cupboard as well, which is unreal. In the last, in the ambulance, I was living with any wet clothes would be strung from the ceiling. So when you're trying to cook, you're getting slapped in the chops with like soggy sleeves, soggy socks, and it's not a nice feeling. So to be able to hang my wetsuit up in the bathroom and have it dry in the space of like 12 hours means that the next day when I want to chuck it on, I'm ready to go. I wish I could say that I found these, but when I was building this, it was actually the wrong season to find antlers, but I just thought it was really cool. It, it gave it gave the whole van a bit more of a rustic log cabin type feel, and that's the vibe that I want to go for. So for me, it's important to have a bit of a library while I'm on the road because obviously I don't want to be chinning power all the time. 
Um, so I came up with the idea of just basically putting in a pretty sturdy shelf um, and to keep them in place instead of having any bulky looking things that block off half the books and all that sort of stuff. I've just um, glued my book ends down, um, these little, little owls there, and then attached a suitcase bungee to some hooks that are in the wall. I haven't had any issues with these, it's real rock, rock solid and there is room for the library to expand if I want, um, so yeah. And then here, it's just all my electricals and all that sort of stuff so that if people break into the van then I make it nice and easy for them to find my ga gadgets. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. What I like to do with my gadgets because um, my bed sits up top, I figured that if a thief was to come in then they wouldn't check in the compartment. They might look under the duvet. But if I lift the uh, mattress up, there's a compartment where I can just put all of my electrics and they sit on the other side of, of there. And then I leave like a bait phone and an old camera out for them. So they don't leave empty handed, you know, Sharon's caring. <laughs> well, the last thing that I want to talk to you about is my copper backsplash. Yeah, that's right. Copper backsplash, mother. <laughs> With this, um, I'd bought a sheet of copper and it came, I was originally just going to slap that on, but um, I was like, you know what, let's, let's make it a bit more unique and personalised. So, planished it, which is basically bashing it to shit with a hammer, um, which gives it all of these little dents and all of the like ridges and stuff. Um, and the, after that, I had to cover it in salt and then vinegar and then suspend it in an airtight container over a bath of ammonia. So when I was doing that, um, I was actually trying to film inside the bag and forgot that ammonia is actually really bad for your health and took a lung full in and um, made myself ill for about two weeks afterwards. So I, I think I did some serious damage to my lungs. So if you make one of these, then wear a breather or don't be a stupid bastard and keep your head out of the bag. Uh, just to wrap it up, clothes stuffed in there, the projector, and then more clothes. I originally when I bought the van, I was thinking about turning this into like a weird little um, mezzanine, mezzanine bed type thing. Um, but I didn't. Halfway through the build, I decided to see if I could have actually done that. Um, and I did climb in here and this was before I had the closing mechanism on it. And uh, I shut the door and the door had jammed and I actually got trapped in that compartment. But it is big enough if I wanted to that I could put in like a, I don't know, definitely not a bed for an adult. But if, he, if I was renting it out to a family or something, a kid could sleep in the cupboard. <laughs> like, I don't know if there would be any, but maybe there would. The last important feature I want to talk about that got a lot of attention as well was the pull-up bar. And um, yes, it's not just for decoration, it is for my workouts and it takes all of my weight. And I actually hang upside down from this to stretch my spine out. I travel with my weights, I go into the mountains a lot, I need to stay fit and stay strong. So um, this is actually just kept on. <sighs> it's actually just kept on with um, four bolts that come through it. Um, I marked them on, drilled through, and on the other side, there's just some nuts and bolts keeping it in place. And it is definitely strong enough to do what you want on it. Ta-da! I hope you enjoyed that video. If you hadn't noticed, we do sell an ebook for how to convert a van. It has over 190 pages of detailed instructions and diagrams, also 25 video tutorials which are specifically for the ebook buyer. Creating a van for many people is obviously a really intimidating project, but I really believe, and I've seen it time and time and time again, that with the right information, anyone can turn out with a pretty decent van conversion. So check the link in the description, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, uh, and drop us a comment if you like this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.